Welcome to the Creating a Roadway Tutorial from FaithinLCA.com. I'm going to assume that uh, you've already signed into the tool as described in our previous uh, video. And you're logged in, you start the dashboard, and we're going to start a new project. So I'm over here to the left pane. I'm going to click New Project. This is what pops up, and I'm going to call this Tutorial. Or not make that fault, that's the example I'm going to use right now. Project lifespan of 50 years, it's default to 50 years. The minimum you can do is 30 years. If I hit 20 years, it should uh, change the 30 automatically, so I'm going to leave it at 50. Um, we need to choose a location. At the time of doing this video, we only have Canadian data in the tools, so there's only Canadian locations. And I choose Ontario East, which really means Toronto. Um, the three boxes uh, below that are uh, distances that we need to input. Average distance of plant to site. That is the average distance of your mixing plant, basically your asphalt mix or your concrete mixing ready mix plant to the site. Um, it defaults at 30. I'm going to leave it at 30 for this example. Average distance of site to stockpile, that's the distance from your site to your recycling stockpile. So if you're removing asphalt or uh, removing concrete during the maintenance phase, um, that's the distance that that material gets trucked um, away from site. Um, and the other distance is the average distance equipment depot to site, and that's from your yard to your site, and that's the distance that equipment pieces get floated um, for uh, each stage of the construction, either the initial construction or the rehab step. I'm just going to leave them all the default for now. Uh, project number, project description, um, you can put that, put anything you want in there. I'm just going to type in here so you'll see where it comes up later. And that's it. That's uh, you created the new project. I'm going to save it. And then we're going to work from there. So the first thing um, we want to do is create our roadway. And that's what this video is about. So I'm going to hit Project Roadways tab up here. You'll see here I have no roadways in this table. So I click the Add Roadway button. And this form pops up. So again, we need to give it a name. Um, the initial cost is here um, at the moment. Um, this doesn't do much. It's there for information only. Um, plans are in the future to link this up to a lifecycle costing tool, and that's where hopefully we can export this these values into a costing tool. But for now, there's uh, there's not much to it other than a fake number. And it's there for information. Lane length is critical. I'm going to uh, just put in one kilometer. Um, the number of lanes, I'm going to say for this example, let's increase it to two pavement lifts. I'll just use one, and I'm going to use one granular layer. As it's a hot mix asphalt road, I'm going to call it, I'm going to click flexible pavement up here. So the slab length and the reinforced steel, those won't apply to this roadway. Those are for ridge pavements. And you can add shoulder elements over here. I'm not going to do that exactly at the moment. I'm going to hit apply. And you'll see here a roadway cross section has been added here. It's just a schematic of um, it's not to scale or anything, but it's a schematic of what the roadway is going to look like. And then the roadway design details section below, and that's where we specify what the materials are and the dimensions of these different elements. So we've got um, a granular layer here, or if you're doing it another way, we've got two lanes, and let's say I'm going to say both lanes are of a specific. Um, Pavement type. Um, so 
So payment will show up here. I'm just going to choose Ontario City Bank 12.5 HMA. Uh, this is a material that we using in the sample projects, which we'll see in, in future videos. And you'll see here, it assumes that uh, both of these lists of payment are the same. You can't change it if you want to. We can change that to OGM 9.5. I'm going to leave them both at SuperPay 12.5. And our granular layer is um, a granular layer underneath, obviously, and we have a choice of granular materials under on this box. And I'm going to choose Ontario Granular A, just as an example. Um, the width of the lanes, uh, we're going to put in, let's say, a four meter width for uh, lane one, and hit return click over there, I put in a thickness of, let's say, 100 millimeters thick for that layer. That's going to be 100 millimeters for the other layer, too. You can change that if you want to. That's going to be four millimeters, uh, four meters wide, and that's going to make the granular layer eight meters wide. It's not going to calculate it for you. You have to figure that out for yourself, but it's what it is. And we'll put a thickness of, let's say, 300 millimeters granular there. And you'll see here, here's the density of the materials you've chosen. Here's the mass of them, the area of these sections, these areas, cross-sectional areas here, and the volumes are calculated. But basically, that's it. You just created a road. So I'm going to save the roadway. Now, uh, let's say you want to go back and change some things or add some things. So I'm going to change this to two lifts instead of a two 100 meter millimeter lifts, I'm going to make 250 millimeter lifts. And I'm going to add um, shoulders and roundings. I'm just going to do it on one side, left and right are both the same. Um, we're going to add an unpaved shoulder with some left side rounding and a core slope of four to one. And there we go. We've added those. I'm going to hit apply again. Let's scroll up here. You'll see this cross section is going to change. Um, it's not uh, again a schematic. It's not drawn like uh, there's a force slope on this, but there's a force slope on the rounding. There's a shoulder, unpaved shoulder that's been added, and we change that going two lanes, two lifts. So we go back down to the roadway design elements, and you'll see the data that we'd entered before. Is still there. It's assumed that these new lanes are the same width, so they populate that, but it hasn't populated the material. But I'm going to do that, and we'll go up here to Ontario Super Bay 19, let's say, for lift two, which according to this is the bottom lift here. And I'm going to change that thickness to 50 millimeters, and I'm going to change its upper thickness to 50 millimeters. And I'm going to do the same with lane two. I'm going to have both be 50 and B with lift two. It's pre populated the material from the first one and the thickness. That really only works the first time when uh, you have zero values. Uh, you can go ahead and change them later if you want to. Now, the left side rounding, it's going to be a granular material. So again, we have the list of granular materials here, and let's just is called granular A as opposed to the Ontario granular A for this example. And we're going to make the left paved shoulder, unpaved shoulder, Ontario granular A. There we go. Um, the left side rounding has a width, it's assumed a width of uh, eight meters, but that's uh, probably not correct. So it's, now this is, you have to know that this is assuming the top. Width of that rounding, I'm going to say one meter, and I'm going to say it is, um, let's say it's the same thickness as these two lifts, so it's going to be 100 millimeters. And then for the unpaved shoulder, we've chosen the material, and let's say it's two meters wide, and it's also 100 millimeters thick. Now, we've probably also increased this uh, 
the width of this granular layer under uh, our rounding and our shoulder. We now have eight meters of paved planes. We have two meters of shoulder. That's 10 meters. We've got another meter there. Plus, if you can imagine as I'm drawing my mouse down here, this is a trapezoid shape. It starts off at a meter, but it ends up at something, but it's not going to calculate it for us. You need to calculate that. So I'm going to say it's something like 11 meters wide, just for the sake of simplicity. So we've added those elements. Again, we've uh, done the calculations over here, and I'm going to hit a, sorry, I'm not going to hit a, I'm going to hit update roadway, and I'm going to save the roadway that way. And that's basically it. Um, I'm going to go back to my projects. And so it has saved that roadway as tutorial HMA. I'm going to quickly create a new project. And I'm going to create a uh, concrete road. Take the same location. Save that project. Project roadways. Add a roadway. Give it a name, concept matter, lane length again, I'll do a kilometer. I'm gonna do two lanes, one left, one granular layer. It's a rich pavement. So it's a concrete road, typically there's slab lengths. Um, this will determine uh, expansion joints and so forth. So we're gonna leave that at 4.5 meters. And then if there's reinforced steel, like tie bars or uh, dowels, um, we need to figure out the amount of steel. Now, this is just going to take a tonnage of steel. I mean, we need to figure out the tonnage of steel. But there is a steel calculator Excel sheet. If you click up here, you click there, turn to the page. Now, down here, this happens to be in Chrome, and it's telling me here to uh, save the file down here. I'm going to click on that. It opens for me in Excel. I'm going to bring Excel into view here. And this is what the Excel sheet looks like. Sooner or later, uh, we're going to have this as a pop up on the web tool itself, but for now, it's just the Excel sheet. And you'll see here it's asking the same information. So we have one lane length, we have two lanes, uh, the total roadway width. We haven't uh, put that in yet, but I'm going to say it's eight meters. And the joint spacing we had left, the slab length we had left at 4.5 meters. Now for the dowel bars, so it, it tells you here the lengths of our longitudinal joints and transverse joints. And dowel bars typically will go on the long, the transverse joints and the tie bars will go on the longitudinal joints. So dowel bars, I'm going to say it's um, 300 millimeter spacing with uh, 28 millimeter diameter dial bar and a 450 millimeter length of dial bar. Um, the density is assumed to be this density for steel, but it can be greater than that or less. You can change that. Or you can do mass per dial bar there if you happen to know exactly what the mass per dial bar is. Anyways, calculates a total of 12.937. So I'm going to take this number, 12.937. I'm going to go back to tool and I'm going to say that my dial bars is 12.937 tons of epoxy coated steel for my dial bars. Now, we got tie bars as well on the longitudinal joints. I'm going to go back to the steel calculator and calculate that there too. And let's say the spacing is greater than that. It's um, 900 millimeters, 15 millimeters diameter, and the length 450 millimeters. And again, it calculates a total down here of 0.694. Now, if both the tie bars and dial bars were epoxy coated, you could use this number here, 13.631. But I'm going to say that they're different, so I'm going to I've got 0.694 tons of tie bars back to the roadway here. And I'm going to make them galvanized steel at 0.694 tons. I'm going to leave out the elements for this one. I'm going to hit apply. There we have it. 
simple roadway cross section. Again, we select the materials. Okay, granular A. We've got Ontario PCC, let's say. With uh, four meters each. No, oh, pardon me, from granular, eight meters, four meters each. Thickness of two hundred millimeters and a thickness for the slab of two hundred millimeters. There we have it. That's how you calculate the steel and when you're inputting for uh, urban roadway. So I'm going to go up here and say roadway. Go back to my projects. And I have my two basic initial roadway designs. We'll go through the maintenance and rehab steps and the PBI steps in the next videos. Back to me.